Hey, my friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's Tom, Watchman River. I'm glad you guys are joining me today. I appreciate you guys. I hope you're well. Uh, it's kind of cloudy here, you know, which is okay because I had those few sunny days. So I, you know, I got my sun level back up. <laughs> got a little bit of vitamin D in me, so I'm fine, you know. But it is a little cloudy today and not that cold. It's a nice day. I think it's going up to 50 today. So, uh, and, and I got to tell you, before we get started, because there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, the Jets are ready to strike Hezbollah and Lebanon. But we'll get into that. But um, I, I'm craving water. Something so simple, you won't believe it. Today, I'm craving water and honey mustard pretzels. Those little crunchy honey mustard flavored pretzels. I love those things. I love those things. You guys ever try those? If you like them, I recommend you have them. You know, that's a that's a that's a sturdy recommendation right there. All right, so you know, bef uh, before I get into, I got to go to scripture. I just you know, I want to get into stuff. I'm going to scripture because it's very important, and this is such a great psalm for these days. I think I read it one other time, maybe twice. This one's so good. For these days. This is Psalm 27. Let's go. Here we go. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up, have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Beautiful, isn't it? Man, when you're down and you're like, come on, you know, Lord, I'm tired of this world. And are you there? You know, are you coming soon? This is a great psalm. Some people in the comments have told me they've memorized this whole psalm. Psalm 27, powerful. So look, we're, we're living in a very turbulent world. Would you agree? We're living in a in a very turbulent world. We, I believe we are living in the very, very last days. We, we're seeing it in the news every day. We're watching it like birth pangs, ramping up, wars, rumors of wars. We're watching all these globalist ventures right before our eyes. We're watching the 2030 agenda that everyone is obsessed with. We're watching central bank digital currencies being tested and ironed out, getting it ready for that beast system. We're seeing a rise throughout the entire world of violence and riots in the streets. This never used to happen. If, if there was a, a huge riot somewhere, I don't care what part of the world it was in, it would take over the cable news 25 years ago. They'd show it for 24 hours. Now it's everywhere all the time. We are seeing so many calls for peace and safety and peace security, it blows my mind. We're in the very last days. 
Nobody can convince me we're not. We're watching the cries to push Israel into basically forcing a two-state solution from all over the world. Then within Israel, we're seeing a cry for the third temple and we know it's going to happen. Doesn't have to happen before the rapture. I think it probably happens right after the rapture. They have the red heifers. They haven't had red heifers like this perfect ones. They only need one. And I think they have four that are perfect. They only need one. They need to sacrifice it to use those ashes so then they can begin their temple sacrifice. We're seeing earthquakes in diverse places. There was an earthquake in Cape Canaveral, Florida, the night before last. Unheard of. Unheard of. It's an area that just doesn't get earthquakes. Volcanoes that are just active. All More volcanoes are active right now. This year, they're ramping up. They're active all over the world than there's ever been before at one time. Lies and deception from every angle, everywhere we look. We're being lied to. We're being lied to in advertisements. We're being lied to on television. We're being lied to in the press. We're being lied to. Everywhere we look is lies and deception. I always tell you the only truth I can find is Jesus. The only truth is in the Word of God. And it's a relationship with Jesus. People calling good what is evil and evil what is good. Do you see that? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Romans chapter 1 verse 28 says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. In the original Greek, the word for debased means morally reprehensible, depraved, worthless, despicable. We're seeing that. God is giving them over to their debased minds. And we're seeing wicked and evil increase at a rate that's unimaginable. I never thought, I, in my 60 years, I never thought I would see this much evil. And it's celebrated. Everyone's like, where's the justice in this world? What has happened? There's no justice anymore. We're in the last days. We're getting very close to the pre-tribulation rapture. Very close. It's time to pay attention. It's time to be awake. It's time, most of all, to keep your eyes on Jesus. Go to the Word. Be in the Word every day. From the times of Israel, I'll probably call this I'll probably call this video like the jets are ready to strike because in the times of Israel today, the IAF chief warns Hezbollah, hundreds of our fighter jets are ready to strike at a moment's notice. You know, now that the war is winding down or appears to really like Israel's in control of the Gaza Strip for the most part, the northern Gaza Strip is done. The southern one, they're still in Han Yunus, but it's they've encircled it and they're really honing in on hopefully they're going to try to find the, the hostages but as that is winding down Israel's very emboldened to say let's take care of this problem with Hezbollah on the Lebanon border and let's push them beyond the Latani River let's get them you know up a few miles and they're emboldened right now says the chief of the Israeli Air Force Major General Tomer Bar issues a warning to the Hezbollah terror group saying hundreds of Israeli fighter jets are ready to strike at a moment's notice. Quote, Hezbollah will continue to pay with the loss of its systems. Dozens of aircraft are now operating in the skies of southern Lebanon. And as soon as the order is given, the dozens will turn into hundreds that will perform the missions within minutes of being scrambled, Barr says at an internal IAF conference. During the conference, senior officers summarized the IAF's recent activities amid the war in the Gaza Strip and presented the plans for 2024, which is 
it's expected to be a year of fighting. They expect this to go on all year. Now, Hezbollah is way more powerful than Hamas. And I believe God steps into this war at some time because the hand of God is on this nation and on those people. No matter what anyone tells you, when you go to some YouTube channel and they're telling you, this is not the same Israel, this isn't the right Israel, these aren't the right Jews, you're being deceived, Rothschilds. <laughs> the Lord said he would make the nation of Israel a nation in one day. It happened. Then he said he would draw people from all over the, all the nations back. It's happened. We've watched it. We've watched it happen since 1948. Don't be deceived into thinking. And I'll get comments from Bible-believing Christians who will say, no, 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 this isn't the right Israel. You're being deceived. End times deception. This is the Israel, and these are the Jewish people, and this is where the 144,000 are going to come out of this Israel, out of those people, 12,000 from each tribe, And your argument, if you have an argument with that, is with scripture. But there's a lot of, it's really weird to see a lot of anti-Semitism in Bible-believing Christian circles. And a lot of it is that replacement theology where they teach people that the Gentiles now have all the promises of the Jews. So when, when you know, so God lied, basically, is what they're saying. How can you trust a God who takes his promises from one group of people, promises, God, who is the same today, yesterday, forevermore. And you take his promises to a certain group of people and say, all right, we've shifted them to this group of people. Don't do that. Please don't fall into that trap. I'm seeing too many people fall into it. And it's sad. And, and I'm not saying, and I've always said this, you don't have to worship the government of Israel. But I'll tell you one thing. The hand of God is on that nation. Anyway, let's look at what else is going on, okay? Uh, top Hezbollah commander hit an apparent Israeli strike as Air Force head threatens more. This was yesterday afternoon. An apparent Israeli drone strike on Thursday in southern Lebanon targeted two Hezbollah operatives, reportedly including a senior commander in the Lebanese terror group. Following repeated missile attacks that left three IDF soldiers wounded, one seriously, and damaged a house near the border. As a rash of cross-border attacks throughout the day kept tensions at the border high, Israel's Air Force chief threatened that hundreds of attack aircraft could be flown into Lebanon at a moment's notice, like we talked about. At a moment's notice. This is a really interesting and wild time to be alive. The last generation. If you belong to the Lord, you are part of the generation that will not taste death unless he decides to take your breath away before the rapture, but you will be face to face with Jesus. We're the generation. Listen to this from Israel Today. Channel 12 is reporting that Hamas leader Sinwar has been out of touch for 10 days now. This raises many questions. Why? Where is he? Is he still alive? But also, how can the Hamas leadership abroad make a hostage deal offer if it has no contact with the man actually holding the hostages? <laughs> can you believe that? So they don't know where he is right now. I, I've got a feeling that the IDF, I think they know where he is, but, you know, or, or the whereabouts, like a general area of where he is. This is uh, also from Israel Today. And this was middle of the night last night. Hezbollah overnight fired 30 missiles into northern Israel. There were no reports of casualties. Hezbollah said this was in response to a targeted drone strike earlier in the day in which Israel killed a senior member of the Iran-backed terrorist militia. French officials reportedly warned Lebanese leaders that Israel is preparing to go to war against Lebanon as a whole due to the situation with Hezbollah. Wars and rumors of wars ramping up, ramping up. Next from Insider Paper, we have Israeli destruction to make a Gaza buffer zone is a war crime, according to the UN. 
Israel's reported ongoing destruction of all buildings along the border inside Gaza with the aim of creating a buffer zone is a war crime, the United Nations rights chief warned on Thursday. I don't know if they, I don't know if they called what happened on October 7th a war crime, but I don't believe the UN did. It's interesting, isn't it? In a statement, Volker Turk pointed to reports that Israeli military is working inside the Gaza Strip to destroy all buildings within a kilometer of the border fence with Israel with the objective of creating a buffer zone. I wonder why they have to do that. Come on. I wonder why. <laughs> Next, we got from Israel today. While U.S. and French diplomats have been trying to prevent a war between Israel and Lebanon, Here's the foreign minister of Iran taking off from Tehran today to visit Beirut. They have a picture of him. See what he looks like? That, that's it. <laughs> How much you want to bet he's working toward a different goal? The Americans and French might have money and diplomatic clout, but Iran has a literal army on the ground in Lebanon. Hezbollah. Yeah. Yep. You know, we're in an election year here in the United States, so we are... You know, really, things are happening that are more to do with saving face for our election than caring about anyone else. The Jerusalem Post. This happened last night. Syria claims to have downed Israeli drones near Damascus. Syria's defense minister claimed to have downed two drones launched from Israel toward the Damascus area on Friday afternoon with Syrian media reporting that an Israeli airstrike had targeted a military airport east of Damascus about the same time. And I think it did hit the, that airport. It's the Meza, I think that's how you pronounce it, M-E-Z-Z-E-H, Meza, Meza. Meza makes it sound Italian, Meza. <laughs> it's probably the Meza military airport. What else? <laughs> Next we've got, from the Times of Israel, the IDF is preparing for an expansion of war. Northern Command Chief tells the heads of evacuated communities. You know, all those people, they, they all left their homes in the north. They're waiting for peace and safety to be declared so they can go back into their homes. The head of the IDF's Northern Command, Major General Ori Gordon, met with mayors and council heads of the evacuated communities in the north to discuss the security situation along the Lebanon border, the IDF says in a statement. Listen, listen to this quote. Listen to this. He's, Gordon assured the local officials that the military's goal is, here's the quote, to change the security situation in the north in a way that will allow the residents to return safely and with a sense of security. Everything is safety and security. And he said that the IDF is continuing to prepare for the expansion of the war and going on the offensive of the war and going on the offensive against the Iran-backed Hezbollah terror group. But he's saying, you know, at some point we'll get where our goal is the peace and safety to get you back to those homes. Is that the peace and safety and sudden destruction comes? I don't know. I believe we're seeing the Psalm 83 war. I believe God will enter in. I just don't know if that, when they're saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes, which I think is a combination of God entering in and the rapture. I don't know if that comes when this Hamas thing is done. I just, or will we see this Hezbollah front open? I, I kind of think we might see the this next front open, but I don't know, we'll see. I don't have a crystal ball. I have Bible prophecy and I have the Lord. That's all I need, right? That's all any of us need. All right, here we go. Uh, Ukraine, this is from Insider Paper. Ukraine claims drone strikes on Russian oil refineries. These videos are crazy. The fires. Ukraine fired drones at two separate Russian oil refineries overnight Friday, sparking at least one large fire. A source in Kiev security services told the AFP on Friday. Kiev has ramped up strikes on Russian oil and gas facilities over the past two months. Part of what it is called fair retaliation on infrastructure used to fuel Russia's war. Also, Russia, they say, may be trying to build 10,000 attack drones um, a year for use in Ukraine. Plans for massive domestic production 
of the 200 kg to 2500 km Iranian designed suicide drones and the high price Moscow is paying for them are just two of the purported revelations of files that an Iranian hacking group says it stole from a company controlled by Tehran's leading parliamentary arm. So they're building drones. Everything's like, you know, I just, I, I, I'm shocked. I'm shocked that some people just can't see we're in the last days. You know, I'm just shocked. It's all I see. Tornadoes spotted as Midwest threatened by severe weather. It may be February, but Chicago and Milwaukee experienced weather more typical of spring with thunderstorms that triggered warnings on Thursday with hail and even tornadoes. I saw some footage and I think it was outside of Milwaukee, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. And I saw six, seven videos of tornadoes that just were like, whoa. See, I've never been in a tornado in real life. I've only seen it on video, but it's frightening looking. Man, no thank you. No thank you. Pray for the people over there. Also, what else? There was a 6.2 earthquake somewhere last night. Traumatic Islands, maybe? And then they lowered it to a 5.7. But in the last 24 hours, there have been 61 earthquakes over 4.0 and 5 over 5.0. And like I said, one of them was over 6.0. And then they lowered it. They like to do that. But, you know, this, I don't think I'm ever wearing this red shirt again. When I first started to hit record, I was about ready to hit record. And I looked at the camera and this red shirt was so red that I had to zip up my jacket because it all, it was like a sea of red. <laughs> it's too red for this camera. All right. Let's go. Let's see. I don't know. Is this Clown World? No. This is from Insider Paper. The FCC outlaws AI-generated voices in robocalls as concerns grow about their ability to deceive voters. Yeah, an election year. They want to outlaw these robocalls with AI because they can make the sound of the president's voice or somebody running for president say anything they want. So they outlawed it. How are they going to enforce that? Like, you know. Did you, ever, did you ever sign up? Years ago, they had the sign up list for the do not call list. So I remember, all right, well, I get on this. I go, I went online. It was probably the 90s, I'm guessing, maybe the early 2000s. I went online. I went to this government website and I put my number in do not call list. I won't get those junk calls anymore. It lasted about a week, maybe. <laughs> so I don't know how they're going to enforce this, but this is what they're saying. Okay. This is Clown World. This is from Food Navigator, and its insects will be seen as normal food. How industry is combating consumer reluctance to eat insect protein. No, not doing it. Insects are not only thought to contain at least as much protein as conventional meat, but are also more environmentally sustainable. However, their novelty on the market poses challenges in consumer acceptance. I wonder why. How do startups persuade consumers to eat bugs? You are, you're not going to convince this consumer. No, I'll just have water, please. No, I'm not eating that. I'm not eating that. This is another one. This, this is one of those things that I really believe in the last days. Like, we, we'll see this and we'll yeah, yeah, that's the way it is now. But man, if you saw this like 30 years ago, you'd have been like, what? <laughs> PETA, the, the people for ethical treatment of animals, we all want animals to be treated nicely unless, unless we're about to eat them. But, you know, we want that to be as painless as possible. But anyway, this is PETA calls on a music ride manufacturer to stop selling animal themed carousels. They no longer want horses on the merry-go-round. I'm not kidding. I wish I could say I was kidding. I'm not kidding. PETA got on, on its high horse this week, calling on the country's largest manufacturer of amusement rides to stop selling animal themed carousels. The animal rights organization sent a letter to Kansas based chance rides on Tuesday, arguing that using designs of horses and other animals for the merry-go-round unintentionally celebrates the exploitation of animals that are thinking, feeling, affectionate, playful, and social beings. You know, I love animals. But I just can't see, like, are they going to stop the horse races? I think they're against that, too. 
they're basically against anything. They they worship animals. You know, they worship the animals are way more important than people to them. And animals are wonderful. I love animals. I really do. And I, when I see animal cruelty, it really does flip me out. But carousels, merry-go-rounds, what are they going to replace them with? Clowns? <laughs> are we all going to ride clowns on the merry-go-round in clown world? It's just crazy. It's crazy. All right, let's get to a testimony of the day and a few comments of the day, okay? Brian. I grew up in a Christian household and even called myself a Christian. I prayed, I got baptized when I was 16, and eventually just went on with my life. Unfortunately, I did stray away from God and found myself questioning everything. I was at a point where I was delighting in my sin. I would say that I was even hostile to the idea of Christianity. Three years ago, man, so many people in the last two or three years. Three years ago, I started coming across videos like these and heard people's testimonies, and I felt a tugging on my heart. So for the first time in over a decade, I fell on my face and prayed. I felt the full weight of my sin and knew I deserved hell, but understood what Jesus did for me. After my prayer, I took a nap and woke up to find the entire world appeared different. I couldn't explain it. I went to a restaurant and noticed that I loved everyone in there, regardless of who they were or what they might have done. I was in awe. And I kept hearing this thought in my head saying, I make all things new. Oh, that's like, that's part of my testimony. I'll share that one day. Oh my goodness. I kept hearing in my head, I make all things new. It wasn't until later that I found out that I had been filled with the Holy Spirit. I was overflowing with joy and peace like never before. This was a tremendous supernatural event and I felt blessed. I dove into the Bible and couldn't get enough. I wanted to quit my job right then and go into seminary, but again, I heard a thought that wasn't my own saying, get your house in order. Since then, I have been preaching to my family and even had the privilege of baptizing my wife and 13-year-old daughter. But my story is ongoing, but it shows that God loves us and he seeks us even when we're not seeking him. Beautiful. Thank you, Brian. Yes, yeah, some people call that the hounds of heaven. When that that spirit of God is just hounding you, you know, come back to me. Come back to me. Serve me. Comment of the day. Shelly, Jesus grabbed me by the scruff of my neck and brought me back to him. He never gave up on me. For decades, Satan lied to me and made me think that I wasn't loved. But now, now Jesus holds me in his arms and we walk together. I have made it my mission to ensure I stay in his presence and have returned to a church. God's got me, and he's not going to let go. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Shelly, thank you. Praise God. Deidre, prayer for those of my Watch and River family who needs the encouragement. Jesus is coming soon. God, I need you every day, every second, every moment, as long as I am breathing. Lord, I cannot face this world alone. You are the reason I have made it this far. Please never let go of my hand and guide me as I try and make it through this dark world until you come for us. Maranatha family, we are all close to going home. Amen. Oh, what a blessing. These are good ones. Big Red. I pray for everyone in pain. Those experiencing loss. Those that are homeless. Those that lack money for food. Those who are in the grasp of addictions. And I pray that Christ will enter into your life and the perfect hope will give you peace and joy. God bless us all. Thank you for that. Thank you. Emerald. When I read this comment, uh, when I saw this, I thought, is that true? And I'm like, it really is true. Listen to Emerald said, we are only 39 days into 2024. Each day, the birth pains are increasing with each passing day. Look up, our redemption is near. You're right. And I was shocked. I'm like, are we really only 39 days into 2024? Because to me, it feels like it's been a, quite a while. More than 39 days. Sparkle. Jesus ransomed me with his blood. That's the entire comment. But that's such truth. He paid the price. He saved us. He rescued us with his blood. Incredible. Tina, 
I'm crying with you, Tom. I was kind of weepy on yesterday's video. I'm crying with you, Tom, because I too have experienced his forgiveness, mercy, and grace. Getting out of that pig pen and running back to the arms of Jesus is the best thing I have ever done. Our God is so good. She's saying that because I was talking about prodigal sons and daughters yesterday and how it's time to come back home. You know, there's no time. There's no time anymore just to waste. It's time to come back home. And there are so many, how many people do we hear from that are prodigals, that were prodigals? They belong to the Lord. They had that true born again experience. And then they walked off. And they just lived the life the way the, they lived their lives the way they wanted to. They just didn't, there was no, there's no regard for God when you're doing that. I think as a former prodigal, when I was away from God, I never doubted his existence. I never thought he wasn't there. I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. But man, you come home and you really, you really think he's not going to accept me. I'd love to know more details about the prodigal son parable <laughs> because from all we gather from it that son who decides to go home to his father after wasting his inheritance on crazy living when he heads back i've always thought can you imagine the journey back can you imagine all the doubts can you imagine what he was saying to himself okay now i'm a total failure i was lusting after the pigs who now i have to go home what is dad gonna say I've wasted my inheritance. And you know the story. The father sees him at a distance and runs to him, wraps his arms around him, throws a party for him. He didn't even have time from what we know to say, dad, I'm sorry that I did this. Dad, I'll be your servant. He didn't even have time. That's the way Jesus is. Because when I was a prodigal, I was afraid to return and it wasn't, in, you know, I had to have a lot of bad stuff happen to me before I said, I'm ready to go home. A lot of bad stuff. And I, and I caused a lot of people a lot of pain. But when I headed back, Jesus picked me up. He met me. He ran to me and he picked me up. Am I worthy of that? No, <laughs> no. That's how much he loves us. That's his grace. That's his mercy. It's never too late for anyone. It's never too late. Don't let anyone tell you or don't think. Don't let the enemy tell you. I've done too much bad stuff. I can't go back to Jesus. It's never too late. Jesus came to this earth to die for our sins, to pay for our sins with his blood. He put on human flesh. He walked perfectly among us. Knowing the whole time that he was the Lamb of God. And he knew he was going to shed his blood to pay for our sins. That's why he came here. That's what happened. He never sinned once, but they treated him like a criminal. They beat him. They brutalized him. And they put him on the cross. This is the God of the universe. The only begotten Son of God who spoke and nothing became everything. He's the one who put the sun in the sky and the moon and the stars, and he's the one hanging on a cross because he loves you. He's the one shedding blood, allowing it to happen because he loves you. He wants to spend eternity with you. And the only block between you spending eternity with him, the only roadblock there is unbelief. If you just say, I don't want to believe that, I don't need that, you won't spend eternity with him. You will spend eternity separated from him in a place called hell. That's the only obstacle right there is unbelief. But when you say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I know that your blood washed me white as snow. I know that your blood removed every sin from me as far as the east is from the west. I have faith in that blood. And I believe in your finished work on the cross. You're saved when you do that. But that's the biggest decision you have in life. Will you accept the payment for your sins and believe in what Jesus did for you? Believe the gospel, which means good news. The good news, you're saved because of his blood, because of what he did. 
You can't do anything to add to that salvation. You can't do anything to take away, take anything away from it. He paid it all. He did it all. And you just say, Lord, I, I trust in your blood and I trust in your finished work. I think you did this for me. I believe that you did this for me. Thank you. And you're born again when you do that. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. Put his Holy Spirit in you. Do that. Do it today. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. If any of that sounds like truth to you, you run toward it because it may never come back. That feeling may never come back. But talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. He can help you a lot more than I can. All I can do is give you the good news. He does everything. He's the all in all everything. Our one-time payment for sin, our King, our Savior, our Lord. And he is good. So I'm going to shut the camera off now. And I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and you guys, today is... I'm not saying it is the day of the rapture, but I'm saying it is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if we're not raptured today, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.